The new ultra keyer effect inside of Premiere Pro CS5 is GPU accelerated and it's a new way of working with green screen footage um, that is called vector keying. Uh, the idea behind vector keying is this will actually go through and it will fill in color information and it will analyze color vectors or changes in the background. So really where the ultra keyer can be useful is if you're shooting on marginal footage, let's say something in 8-bit uh, 420 color space, or if you're shooting on something that doesn't have a, a perfect background, the ultra keyer can be used to key right on the timeline and because it's GPU accelerated um, using part of the new uh, Adobe Mercury engine playback system inside of Premiere Pro, um, it's just it's lightning fast. You can drop it right and use it right in the timeline without having to dynamically link comps from After Effects. So let me give you a quick example of how this works. In this example, I'm actually going to use some higher end footage. I'm going to start with some uh, red 3K footage, but keep in mind that this will also work on HDV. It'll work on you know footage from like the EX1 or EX3 cameras from Sony. Um, anything that uh, from from DV footage all the way up to the high end here, which is uh, some red footage at 4K resolution, you can use the Ultra Keyer on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load this into my source monitor. You can see here's my clip. I've already gone through and trimmed the front and the, the uh, front and the back of this, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it right on my timeline. And now that it's on my timeline, I'm going to go to my effect controls panel. And with this clip, clip selected, first thing I'm going to do is apply a crop and just dial in the edges. Now keep in mind crop is a very basic way of cropping out or matting out these uh, areas off the green screen. Premiere Pro also comes with a whole series of different things including a 16 point garbage mat um, and the functionality of these is animatable as well. So you can see we can animate the crop if necessary here. I'm just going to keep it simple and stick with a, a basic crop effect and just crop off the, uh, the left edge here about 15 percent and then we'll crop out the right edge here I think I gotta go a little bit further maybe about 19 percent but I definitely don't want to get the hand so if I want to I can just quickly go through and scrub through this make sure that I'm not getting the hand looks like I'm getting just a little bit there so maybe we'll back this off again maybe more like 18 percent it comes pretty close to the edge there. So we'll just call this one 17.5. There we go. All right, now that we got this, let's go ahead and apply the Ultra Key effect. So I'll go ahead and start typing in Ultra Key. There we are, drag and drop. And the first thing that I want to do is actually pull the key on this shot here. So one of the things that I'm looking for and one of the best places to pull the key is if you see some place that's maybe a little bit uh, darker that's a little bit different I could just pull a point from up in here but probably the better place to pull the key is from this little darker region over on the side here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my eyedropper tool and select that region there. Now, when you're looking and working with Ultra Key, you can choose different viewing modes. So I can actually look at an alpha channel output to see exactly how this is keying. Um, at this point, I want to probably go in and adjust the settings for this. And there are a couple of other ways that I can look at this. Um, there's some basic presets in here for relaxed, aggressive, and custom. We're going to use the custom settings, and I'm going to go through here and tweak some of these values. In the matte generation values, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to leave the transparency alone. But one thing that I want to do is bring up the pedestal here, which as I bring this up, this is going to do a pretty good job of pulling out some of that background material here. I can see that my left edge is getting a little bit of garbage on it, so let's just bump this to 15.5. And at any point in the process, because this is accelerated, even though I'm looking at you know 3K footage here that's now being keyed, I can still play this back and get full frame rate and full performance while I'm doing it. So I can see a full preview of how my key is looking. Now I can continue to go in and adjust some other values in here. I might want to bring up uh, uh, the shadows just a little bit. And also keep in mind that I can change my viewing mode here. Instead of seeing the entire image, I can do just kind of a nice tight shot on the head here just to look at shadows, 
maybe adjust for some of the edging in the hair there. So we're seeing it's pulling a pretty good key again, very quick, very fast, very easy to use. From here there are also some matte cleanup functions. These apply sort of a global function to the edge of the mat. So if I uh, jump to time here, let's go ahead and jump to where the left hand appears, which is at about uh, 07, 17 7 in my shot. I can come up here and I can use these preview functions. There's where my hand appears. So I can get a good example of, of how the hand is looking, how the edge is looking in the shot here, and maybe I want to soften this up just a hair. Not too much. Just a little bit of softening just to kind of clean up some of the edges there. The mat cleanup functions all apply globally to the entire matte edge. Last two functions inside of the Ultra Keyer are the spill suppression functions. These will actually go in and automatically analyze what color you're keying off of and can apply the opposite color to the edges. So for example, um, if I go through and I increase the spill control here, easy way to set this up is to increase the spill control. And you can see right now we're getting a little bit of a kind of a, a purple or magenta cast. If I boost this all the way up, you can see that it's now applying a, a way too much color here. But the idea is we can see exactly where, what parts of the image this is being applied to. And we can dial in the appropriate amount of spill suppression, which is all accomplished by adding the opposite color. So on a green screen, it's going to add that magenta purplish pink color. If you're keying on a blue screen, it'll add kind of a lemon yellow color. And Ultra Key will work on any color uh, that you throw at it. So just pick the appropriate color depending on what you're keying. Skin tones, green and blue work great. Finally, there is a layer of color correction. Now, you can always use the more advanced color correction features inside of Premiere Pro, such as the three-way color corrector, if you want to do some more post-keying control. And with the Mercury playback engine being GPU accelerated as well, again, all those controls will be accelerated as well. So if I come in here and I look for color correction controls, I can go ahead and drag and drop those in there. But for convenience sake, there is actually a level of post-key color correction that's built right into Ultra Keys. So what this means is if I just want to dial the luminance, maybe dial the luminance down just a hair to help match him better into my shot here, I can quickly go in and do that right from within the Ultra Keyer without having to go through and drag a different effect with a different set of controls. So there you have it. That's the new Ultra Keyer uh, GPU accelerated chroma keying right on the timeline inside of Premiere Pro CS5.